Hello. Okay. So we're doing some reading comprehension interventions. The first one is called the Ask, Read, Tell intervention. So um, I've selected a passage that you're going to read. Um, and the Ask, Read, Tell intervention, it, um, it has the reader ask what you think it's going to be about, what you think the topic is before you read it and what you know about that topic. And then you're going to generate two questions that you hope to answer while you're reading, while you're reading. Then you're going to read and while you're reading, you stop after each paragraph to make sure you understood it and you know if there's anything that you didn't understand and then third you tell after you've read you attempt to answer the two questions that you thought of before you read it and then you meet with a partner and talk about the passage so here is the passage that I have selected um, <clears throat> and let's see all right you're gonna read the passage by yourself just read the um, you know you can just read the first paragraph um, but before you do so let's ask so if you want to take a look at the title what do you think you can take a look at the title and the picture what do you think this passage is most likely about hitchhikers hitchhikers okay um, and then think about what you already know about that topic and can you think of any um, questions that you might want to know after reading this passage that you might want to be able to answer. You don't necessarily have to think of any right now, but that's how it works. Um, all right. And then you are going to complete, here is the student worksheet, the ask, read, tell student worksheet. So here, and it lists step one. Before reading, I look at the title of the passage and ask myself these questions. So as you are reading this passage, you'll use this worksheet. This is what you do first. This is what you do while you're reading. And then this is what you do after you're reading. Okay. So at this point, she would read the passage and then do the steps on the worksheet. Um, and then afterwards, she would get paired with another student to compare their questions and answers that they've generated from the passage. Okay. The next intervention is called phrase cued text lessons. And so again, the teacher selects a passage, which I have here. Um, and I have marked the passage um, throughout with double slashes to indicate sentence boundaries and single slashes to indicate within phrase. Uh, boundary. So you can see there that it's been marked up the first couple of paragraphs. So I'm going to provide the student with a copy of this showing her the marks. Um, so I'm going to say well, passages are made up of key ideas and these key ideas are often contained in units or wor of words called phrases. And then several phrases make up a sentence. So when we read it helps to read phrase by phrase to get the full meaning of the text. So here is the prepared passage that I show the student and I, so you see how I have these double slashes in here after a phrase and then single slashes indicating um, the within sentence breaks. Um, so I'm going to read the phrase cued passage aloud once as a model and then we, then you will read it aloud and then we will um, answer the content, talk about the content, and then she would um, read the passage again by herself without the marks. All right, so I'm going to read the first paragraph showing you modeling for you. Imagine this. You step up to the sink, wet your toothbrush, and begin cleaning your pearly whites. Out of the corner of your eye, you see something moving on the wall. Suddenly, you realize you're not alone in the bathroom. Your heart pounding, you turn towards the tiny intruder to get a better look. All right, so now you read the past, the cued passage with the marks in it. Go ahead. Imagine this. You step up to the sink, wet your toothbrush, 
and begin cle cleaning your pearly whites. Out of the corner of your eye, you see something moving on the wall. Suddenly, you realize you're not alone in this bathroom. Your heart starts pounding. You turn towards the tiny intruder to get a better look. Very good. So at this point, the student would read the passage two or three times, the ones with the marks in it. And then I would provide her with a clean copy without the marks um, and have her read that again on her own. All right, the next intervention is a story map. And so I've got a passage here and a map that I will um, teach the student how to fill out. And then she'll read the passage and fill out the, filling out the story map as she reads. So we would discuss the main components of the story. We would talk about characters, um, setting, plot, or it could be simple like beginning, middle, and end. And so for this particular story map, um, you put the main idea in the middle, um, and then it's what happened first, what happened second, what happened third, and then how did the story end. So as you're, um, after you read, you go and fill in those components of the story map to help you understand what the passage was about. So you would give each student a blank copy of the story map organizer and then model how to complete it. So um, I'll model how to complete it first. I can't read upside down for this one. Okay, so the passage says, Mila wanted to ride her bike. Her mother told her to put on her knee pads. Mila didn't like to wear knee pads, so she didn't put them on. While riding down the sidewalk, Mila fell off of her bike and scraped her knee. She went home and apologized to her mom, promising to wear her pads from now on. So, what do we think is the main idea of this passage? What is it telling us? To be safe. And I would think, yeah, that it would be that that Mila needs to wear her knee pads to be safe. So you would write that in the middle. Okay, so you would write the main idea in there, and then the first section says what happened first. So I would go back and read the first couple of sentences to remind myself what happened first. So you want to read the first yeah. couple of sentences for me? Mila wanted to ride her bike. Her mother told her to put her knee pads, to put on her knee pads. Mila did not like to wear her knee pads. Okay, so we can stop right there and answer this question. What happened first? You can just say it out loud. Oh, um... Wanted to ride her bike, and her mom said, wear your knee pads. Good job. Right. Okay, then the student would write that. Okay, so read the next couple of sentences, and then we'll answer what happens second. Okay. Let's start with... Um, so she, she didn't put her knee... So she didn't put them on. Okay. While riding down the sidewalk, Mila fell off of her bike and scraped her knee. Okay, so let's stop right there. What happened second? Um, she didn't put them on. And she ended up falling. And okay, so Mila knee. fell. She fell. Okay. All right, continue reading. Person. Continue okay. reading with this sentence here. She went home and apologized to her mom, promising to wear her pads from now on. Okay, so what happened third? She went home and told her mom she'd wear them from now on. Okay. Well, specifically, what did she do when she went home? Apologize. Okay. And then, how does the story end? She promised to wear her knee pads. Very good. Okay, so you can tell how the story map helps the student break down the uh, main components of the story. Okay, the next intervention is uh, summarizing. And so, um, again, I've got a passage here for the student. And so you begin by having the teacher read um, the text selection. Um, so I'm going to read it for you. Jake has his birthday party today. His pals come to his house. They bring Jake gifts. Jake and his pals wear party hats. They eat cake. They play games. They all have fun at the party. And then you ask the students the following questions. So what are the main ideas? What are the crucial details necessary for supporting the ideas? 
what information is irrelevant or unnecessary, and then you have them use keywords or phrases to identify the main points from the story. So here's a way we're going to sum it up. So I've got a worksheet for the student to use. Um, so based on this paragraph that we just read, that we'll read again, you're gonna help me sum up, summarize what this passage is mainly about. So um, why don't you read it again and then we'll talk about the main idea. Out loud. Yes. Jake has his birthday party today. His pals come to his house they bring Jake gifts. Jake and his pals wear party hats. They eat cake, play games. They all have fun at the party. Okay, so um, this asks for a title. We don't really have a title, but if you were going to create a title for this passage, what might it be? Jake's birthday. Very good. Okay, and so what is the main idea of this passage? Jake's friends are over at his birthday party. So Jake is having a birthday party, yeah. right? The main Jake's idea is birthday. that it's Jake's birthday party. So you would list um, that here in this section, the main ideas. And then let's think about some details that support that. What, how do you know, what are some details from the passage that support that he's having a party? Um, Just in um, like call out some words that you might so use when you're talking about that. Eating cake, mm -hmm. bringing gifts, mm -hmm party hats, uh, playing games, the word party. Very good. So those all support the main idea of the birthday party. Good. Is there any information in this particular passage that is not necessary? It's not a very long or difficult passage, so there might not be. They play games, maybe? I mean, you play games at a party, but uh, um, let's see. I don't think there's really anything in this passage that's particular for that. Um, so then you would have the students take those keywords and phrases and I'd, um, and use them to summarize the whole passage. All right, the next intervention is admirals and generals. And so for this intervention, um, typically you would divide the class up into pairs and the pairs would consist of one higher performing and one lower performing student. And so for today's purposes, um, so one person is the admiral and one person is the general. Um, the higher performing reader is the admiral and the other is the general and admirals always read first so that the lower performing student has a good model to follow. So for this demonstration, I'll be the admiral and you'll be the general. Um, so you'd use a social studies or a history textbook that everybody has. Um, I've got a, just a passage here that we're going to use. Um, you would also have like index cards that list some of the um, like rules for you for class that you have for peer tutoring and procedures and how you correct one another. So all of that would be provided to the students. And then you would have review sheets that have key vocabulary or points. So I've got just a list of uh, vocabulary terms here that are from the like target words that are from the chapter that you would read and you would give one of those to each of the students. Um, and then you would also come up with multiple choice questions that cover the content um, that they're going to be reading about and you would give a, each of, a copy of each of that to the students. Um, so um, you would go over the rules of partner reading that you would have already established in your classroom before, before doing this. And so um, we have a whole class uh, review of the information that we talked about yesterday and then you're going to talk about new concepts and activate prior knowledge um, for the new content to be covered and then you would pass out the materials to the students. Um, the admirals will read one paragraph and then the generals will follow. So I'll read this first paragraph and then you would read the second paragraph. You're following along while I read. I'll start here. Actually, it's a bug and it's no more harmful to you than a housefly. This tiny bathroom bug is called a pseudoscorpion, but don't be fooled by its name. It's not really a scorpion, it's just a relative. The pseudoscorpion is a kind of arachnid, which means it is closely related to spiders, scorpions, and mites. Like scorpions, pseudoscorpions have a segmented body and two enormous pincers but pseudoscorpions lack the curved stinger that all true scorpions have. And then the generals would read, Pseudoscorpions usually live in outside 
mulch, under tree <clears throat> bark, and in a leaf, li- and in leaf litter. So how do they end up in the bathroom? They use their pierce-like claws to hitch a ride on another bug, such as flies and beetles. When these insects come in, so do the pseudoscorpions. Pseudoscorpions. Pseudoscorpions attach to their legs. Okay, good job. So they they take turns. The general reads the same paragraph a second time, and then the admiral corrects, and then they go back and forth. And then, um, after reading each paragraph, students stop and ask themselves, okay, so the paragraph that I read, um, who or what was that paragraph about? The pseudoscorpion. Mm-hmm. And then you would ask what is happening to the pseudoscorpions. And then um, what is the summary sentence? So you would come up with a summary for each after each paragraph is read. Um, so students work together to develop the answers to those questions. And they record their answers on their summarization sheets. And then they use the review sheets to take turns asking each other questions from the chapter as a way to learn the content. Go. Okay, this is the critical thinking map intervention. And so I've got a critical thinking map here that you would give to each of the students. And I've also got a list of comprehension questions to be answered. These are generic questions and you give one copy to each student. And it is, what was the main idea? What were the most important steps? What were some other points of view? Was there something that you thought should have been mentioned and wasn't? What do you think after reading this and then how is it related to something in the world today you also give each student a red pen for checking their papers um okay so you would have the critical thinking map displayed on the board or on the smart board or something um and we're gonna i'm gonna explain the components so this is the components of the map there's the main idea and then there's a place um which is like uh the most important message that the passage talks about then you've got important events Um, So these are things that are leading up to the main idea. Um, Then you've got opinions. So that would be your own opinions, um, including background information and knowledge that you have about the topic. And then you've got conclusions. So final conclusions about the passage and reasons to support them. And then you have relevance for today. So comparing the historical lesson and present day events um, and making that connection. So then you would read the passage aloud um, and you pause as you come across answers to the map components, then you can fill them in. So again, this is a very simplified paragraph, but um, ideally it would be on um, like a content area like science or social studies and you would use that paragraph to fill in the components of the critical thinking map. So you model that. First, there's a modeling phase. And then, oh, I have another, sorry, this is the passage that we're using for that. Um, So then you read aloud. So let's see, we're going to read aloud and see if we can answer any of these um, components as we read. So um, if you, if you hear, if you hear me talk about any important events or have any opinions about that or whatever you think the main idea is. Okay. So the passage is the first Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving Day was celebrated for the first time in 1621 by the Pilgrims, a group of people from England who came to America to have religious freedom. The Pilgrims were helped by the Native Americans who showed them how to hunt and grow food crops. The weather that year was very bad. I'm reading upside down. I'm sorry. The weather that year was very bad. So the first harvest was a real miracle. The pilgrims decided to have a feast to thank for the crop that saved their lives. At the feast, they invited their Native American friends, and they all ate food like venison, wild birds, pumpkins, squash, and berries. So, you would then, let me get to my, um, distribute the copies of the comprehension questions and have the students silently read the questions and write down their responses. Oh, I'm sorry. First, you would help students fill in the map using the different components that you explained. Um, And then you would all read the map components aloud and call on students to help you fill in the different components of the map. And then, um, without referring back to the text, you would take up their copy of the text and you would give them the five comprehension questions. 
and have them silently read the questions and write down their responses without referring back to the text. And so that is the, um, that is the modeling phase. And then for, then there are two other phases, the lead phase and the test phase, um, where students just become more independent through this process, um, completing the map components on their own. Uh, you would discontinue the class-wide demonstrations. Um, let's see. But you do the same process. You have them um, filling in the components. Check, you would check for accuracy. Then you collect the maps and give out the comprehension questions and have the students complete them um, until you feel like they have um, mastered that on their own. All right, the last intervention is the um, CSR intervention. And so um, there are four strategies to this. The preview, the click and clunk, get the gist, and the wrap up. Um, so in the preview is when you would introduce to the students by asking them, have you ever been to the movies and seen previews? Yes. Okay, so, um, so what do you learn from previews generally? what the movie's about yeah you learn what the movie's gonna up. be about good do you maybe learn like the setting or where the movie is gonna take place sometimes mm -hmm. um, and you learn whether or not you're gonna like the movie or not whether you think you're gonna like it yeah, yeah. all right and then you might end up having more questions about what you think the movie's gonna be about after seeing the preview so how could we preview this uh, passage what are some things that we can look at that would help us preview well, there's a bug. There's a picture. Good. Um, they're obviously in a bathroom, hence the title. Okay, um, so you're looking at the title to give you clues, yes. and you're looking at the picture. That's good. If there were um, any sort of tables or graphs or other information, that might help you figure out. Um, so you would brainstorm what you think this is going to be about and predict what you think that you're going to learn about. So um, just give me a quick little brainstorm based on this picture. What do you think this passage is going to be about? The bug. Okay, whatever kind of bug that is. All right. Do you have any background knowledge on this bug? What Do you know what kind of bug this is? Yes. You do? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right, so let's see. So you would give your students a few minutes to write down what they know about the topic. They have their CSR learning logs. Um, and then also write down predictions, what they think it might be about. Okay, and then the second strategy is the click and clunk. So you might say something like, um, all right, uh, let's see. Um, so who would like to read the first section? So I'm going to ask you to read this paragraph here. You would ask someone to read the paragraph. Go ahead, starting here. These tiny arachnids m prefer moist places. Since the bathroom tends to be humid after bathing, Bathing, bathing or showers, it's a likely place to find them, but they are usually easily overlooked. Most pseudoscorpions are only about two to eight millimeters long. Okay, good. Did everyone understand what we read? This is the click and clunk part. So if you understand something, then you would put a click, you would say click at the end of that paragraph. Click. But if there is something, if someone has a clunk, if there was something that they didn't understand, you would write your clunk down. Maybe for instance, that word right there, arachnid. If you didn't know that word, you would mark that as a clunk and you would write that down in your learning log and then you could discuss together um, if anyone else in your class knows what that word is and you could clear up that clunk. Or maybe, um, Pseudoscorpion. Pseudoscorpion is a difficult word, or maybe you don't understand why, uh, what the word humid means. Like, um, so you would write down all your clunks. All right, now we're going to get the gist. So um, let's read the next paragraph. Pseudo Pseudoscorpions don't bite, or or sting humans, and they can can even be helpful. These bugs feed on common household pets such as carpet beetles, carpet beetle larvae, ants, mites, and small fleas. Welcoming this hitchhiker into your home may mean that you have fewer household pests to bug you. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so when you get the gist, you talk about um, 
identifying the most important idea in that section. So what's the most important idea that we've learned about the topic so far? Everyone think of the gist. And then you go around the room, around the group, and each say the gist in their own words. Um, okay, and then um, now let's think of some questions to see if we really understand what we read. So this will be the wrap up and everyone write your questions in your learning log. Remember to start your questions with who, what, when, where, why, or how. And then you would call on people to share their best questions. And then you'd write down as many statements as you can about what you had learned. Um, okay.